Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Celis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wednesday, the 15th of December, 2021, of the third week of Advent. Laudate, our daily prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the fulfillment of all our hopes and desires. Set my heart aflame with the fire of your love and with the power of the Holy Spirit, that I may boldly witness the joy of the gospel and serve your kingdom wherever you place me. Amen. Magnificat Daily Scripture But first, an overview. Jesus Christ confronts every imaginable poverty and evil. He cures the blind, the lame, the lepers, the deaf. Even the dead find new life in Him. When we are afflicted by our weaknesses and our sins, He says, Turn to me and be safe. We bend the knee to the Lord and we find in Him vindication and glory. Look, the clouds rain down. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 6. I am the Lord, there is no other. I form the light and create the darkness. I make well-being and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Let justice descend, O heavens, like dew from above, like gentle rain, let the skies drop it down. Let the earth open and salvation bud forth. Let justice also spring up. I, the Lord, have created this. For thus says the Lord, the creator of the heavens, who is God, the designer and maker of the earth, who established it, not creating it to be a waste, but designing it to be lived in. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Who announced this from the beginning and foretold it from of old? Was it not I, the Lord, besides whom there is no other God? There is no just and saving God but me. Turn to me and be safe, all you ends of the earth. For I am God, there is no other. By myself I swear, uttering my just decree, and my unalterable word. To me every knee shall bend, by me every tongue shall swear, saying, Only in the Lord are just deeds and power. Before him in shame shall come all who bent their anger against him. In the Lord shall be the vindication and the glory of all the descendants of Israel. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 85 Responsorial Let the clouds rain down the just one and the earth bring forth a Savior. I will hear what God proclaims the Lord, for He proclaims peace to His people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord himself will give his benefits, our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, 
and salvation along the way of his steps. Let the clouds rain down the just one, and the earth bring forth a Savior. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Raise your voice and tell the good news. Behold, the Lord God comes with power. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 7 verse 18. At that time John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? When the men came to the Lord, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? At that time Jesus cured many of their diseases, sufferings, and evil spirits. He also granted sight to many who were blind. And Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the good news proclaimed to them, and blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magnificat Meditation of the Day is entitled The One We Have Looked For Saint Ambrose, teacher of the famous Saint Augustine, called faith the firm foundation of all the virtues. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, who died around the year 100, let himself be torn to pieces by the jaws of lions in the Roman arena rather than reject his faith. He said, Faith is the beginning and the end is love, and God is the two of them brought into unity. After these comes whatever else makes up a Christian. Or as Cardinal Newman put it, No one is a martyr for a conclusion. No one is a martyr for an opinion. It is faith that makes us martyrs. In the very first part, the profession of faith, the Catechism raises a basic question, a question absolutely crucial. It asks, What does it mean to believe? What is life's ultimate meaning? What does your life mean? What does mine mean? Are we, in fact, only specks in the universe whirling about meaninglessly, not really going anywhere, doomed to die forever, or to go on whirling about in some other form? Is this our destiny? If so, why are we not perfectly content? Why the restlessness within us? What is there about us that searches for meaning beyond everyday events? How do we differ? Do we differ from the beasts of the field, birds of the air, fish in the waters, even the plant life around us? The Catechism answers those questions in speaking of man's capacity for God. This capacity for God is deep within us. We are made that way. Nothing, no one, can completely fill us except God Himself. Only in total communion with God do we really find ourselves. 
St. Augustine, after searching among the intellectuals of the world of his day and indulging his passions, finally, still unfulfilled, gave up. What did he say? My heart was made for you, O Lord, and it will not rest until it rests in you. St. Paul tells us in him we live and move and have our being. The Catechism tells us that, finally, after centuries of waiting for the Messiah, God revealed himself in all his fullness by way of his Son, Jesus, the Lord. Quote, in many and various ways God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by a Son, Christ, the Son of God made man, is the Father's one perfect and unsurpassable word. In him he has said everything. There will be no other word than this. Unquote. Catechism of the Catholic Church 65 and Hebrews 1 1. Christ is the fullness of all revelation. This meditation was written by John Cardinal O'Connor. Cardinal O'Connor died in 2000, was the Archbishop of New York and former Navy chaplain, the founder of the Sisters of Life, and a great friend to Magnificat in its first years. Laudate, Reflections and Actionable Challenges from Our Scriptural Readings Introductory Prayer Lord, you are always present to me in my waking and in my sleeping, but I am not always present to you. Forgive my inattentiveness to you, Jesus, my Creator and Redeemer. Thank you for the gifts of life, my faith in you my family, and the many other gifts you have granted me. I wish you to be the center of my life despite the countless times I put myself first. I love you and long to draw nearer to you in my prayers and actions. Our petition for the next three challenging opportunities helping advance God's kingdom on earth. Jesus, help me to discover your loving hand in my daily life. Our first opportunity. Are we to wait for another? He came to his own, and his own people did not accept him. John 1.11 This is perhaps one of the saddest phrases in Scripture. The desired of nations came to those who should have desired him most, but they did not recognize him. Yet, if we are not careful, this can occur on a daily basis in our own lives. In our desire to make spiritual progress, we might be turning a deaf ear to the voice of conscience and the lights of the Holy Spirit because we are looking for bigger, more spectacular opportunities to love God. We are caught looking for something else, while He is coming to us in the most ordinary circumstances of loving my spouse children, parents, or peers. Our second opportunity, entitled, Go and Tell John What You Have Seen and Heard. Jesus appeals to reason in order to elicit a deeper response of faith. To summarize his message for John, you will know a tree by its fruit. 
John has already heard of the works of Christ. So why does Christ re-emphasize what John already knows? Precisely because we do not always know how to discover the works of God in our daily lives at first glance. It is as if to say, Open your eyes and your ears to learn the ways of God. I am constantly at work in your life. Discover my action, hear my voice, and you will come to see my plan for you. Our third opportunity, entitled, And Blessed is the One Who Takes No Offense at Me. Remember this statement is directed to the greatest man born of woman. Therefore, it must not frighten us that the paths God chooses are sometimes quite mysterious to us. Israel needed John's testimony, yet he spends his last days in prison, hidden from the public eye. What a waste of much-needed talent! This is the cry of reason, unaided by faith. Doesn't God understand how important John is to the equation? Doesn't he know that we need good leaders in society and in the church? Doesn't he know that my husband, my wife, or my child is too young to die? Doesn't he know? It is a subtle temptation to question whether God actually cares about justice in our daily lives or whether his plan is truly the best option. Satan loves leading us down this labyrinthine path, but faith enables us to cling to the truth that God is indeed all-powerful and all-loving. Faith gives us an enlightened vision to find the way and travel it safely. Am I always able to count my blessings no matter what happens in my life? Our Conversation with Christ Lord, I believe in you because you are always faithful to your promises. You never promised that life would be easy, but you did promise that you would give me the grace to carry the cross you asked me to bear. Sometimes I simply do not want to carry it. Help me to bear it generously with faith and love. Mother most pure, make my heart only for Jesus. Our Resolution Today I will visit the Blessed Sacrament and recite the Creed. If I cannot make it to visit our Lord, then I will present myself to Him in the quiet of my heart and recite the same. Further Reflection Entitled the only way to Christmas Day. Quote, only in the Lord are just deeds and power. Unquote. Isaiah 45.24 There's only one name, only one Lord, and only one way to be saved. Go to the Father and have Christmas. John 14.6 Jesus is not only the way to salvation, Acts 4.12. He is also the way to healing, victory, freedom, and Christmas. Jesus is not only the reason for the season, He's the only way to Christmas Day. Jesus is both the beginning and the end of Christmas. Revelations 22.13 he is the Lord, there is no other. Isaiah 45, 6 Some people try to make Christmas like they try to make love. A human being can make neither a true Christmas nor true love. Apart from Jesus, from Jesus, 
we can do nothing, including Christmas. John 15, 5 As we approach Christmas, we don't need to do more or do it ourselves. Rather, we must let it be done to us according to God's Word. Luke 1, 38 We must be at the feet of Jesus, like Mary of Bethany, Luke 10, 39, to have a Merry Christmas. At Christmas, we don't need working hands as much as praying hands. We must learn to receive before we give, to wait before we run. Christmas is first a gift from Christ to you before you make it a gift to Christ from you. Remember, Jesus loved us first. 1 John 4, 19 Our Prayer Jesus, may I immerse myself so deeply in you that I have no room for the attractions of this world. God's Promise to Us Blessed is that man who finds no stumbling block in me. Luke 7.23 Thomas A. Kempis quote from the Imitation of Christ. Let heaven and earth, O most sweet beloved, with all their attire be silent before thy face, for whatever of glory or beauty they possess, all is the gift of thy bounty. Nor can they attain to the beauty of thy name, whose wisdom is beyond all numbers. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May His peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.